Everything changes in life, and you probably noticed this, how life has changed for all of us. If you look at cell phones and how the changes come even to that industry, when we look at life in general, we see so much change. We age, we get older, our kids get older, everything around us changes. But what never changes is the Word of God. God's Word stays true, and He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Holy Spirit wants to speak the Word of God into our soul to edify our faith. Here's the thing about the Holy Spirit speaking to us even to this very day, because we believe that the Holy Spirit still speaks. But the way the Holy Spirit speaks today is not through doctrinal direction, but through leading and guiding our directions in our everyday life. The Holy Spirit will never speak anything contradictory to the 66 books of the Bible. The Holy Spirit speaks doctrine only through the 66 books of the Bible. It's what we base our foundation of our faith upon. It's what we base our lives upon. But when it comes to directional leading in our lives, the Holy Spirit can still lead us through a still small voice. He can still direct us. He can still convict us. He can still give us wisdom and, and words of knowledge and what we should be doing, the yeses and the noes that we need through our everyday life. And I really want to encourage you to open up your heart and open up your ears to the understanding that the Holy Spirit may want to speak into our lives. You see, my friends, when we memorize Scripture, when we start getting the Word of God into our soul, I believe that the Word of God can establish a firm foundation of faith in our lives. That's why Scripture memorization can be so incredible for all of our lives. When we memorize the Word of God, no matter what it is that we are going through, the Word of God can build our faith. In Romans 10, 17, it says this, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. One of the ways that faith gets into our soul is by hearing the Word of God. Not just by reading the Word of God, but by hearing the Word of God. When we're hearing the Word of God, it establishes faith, it builds our faith, it makes us stronger, it makes us wiser, it gives us encouragement, but faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Right here I'm going to show you, I've got close to 400 verses that I've been memorizing for the last 13 years. I can really encourage you in this, my friends, because throughout life's trials and difficulties and pains and anguishes, I have always reverted to the Word of God, to these scriptures that I memorized. There's around 400 scriptures here that the Lord has graced me to memorize. There is no way I could have done this on my own. But as I trusted in Him, as I acknowledged my own weaknesses, as I acknowledged my own in on my need to memorize scripture, God touched my mind and gave me the ability to memorize the Word of God. And what I would do is I would go through these verses never, nearly every single day. It takes like an hour and five minutes to do this, so it's a part of my devotional time with the Lord. And what I will do is I will quote the verse on the front of the scripture, and then um, that's the reference, and then on the back I'll try to verbatim say that verse. So for example, here's this one scripture that I've memorized. It is 2 Corinthians 3, 5 through 6, and if I don't fully remember the beginning of it, I'll actually turn it over and have a quick look at the first sentence of that verse so that I can remind myself what that verse says. So it says 2 Corinthians 3, 5 through 6. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God who hath made us able ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. You see, friends, in that verse right there, which I just picked out randomly from my pile of scriptures, even encourages us that we are not sufficient of ourselves to do anything for God. Our sufficiency is of God. We can't do this thing on our own. Anything as believers in Jesus that we try to do on our own by ourselves, we'll end up falling short on it. I want to encourage you to scripture memorize because scripture memorization will really build your faith, it will encourage your soul, and it will really bring a foundation to our lives that we won't have unless we're memorizing the Word of God. In John 8, 32, it says this, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see, my friends, when we memorize Scripture, we find freedom in our lives. We find freedom in our minds. We, give a, we get a new perspective on things that are going on around us. You know, when we're going through our lives and it gets painful, and it gets difficult, and it gets hard, for everyone, life gets hard. It gets hard for everybody. But here's the thing about the Word of God, is we can rely on Scripture, the promises of God, 
that He will not fail us. He will not let go of us. He will not let us down. As we anchor to the Word of God throughout all of life's trials and difficulties and circumstances, we can find peace and assurance in the Word of God. The Word of God is so powerful, my friends, that if we memorize it, it's not only going to edify our faith, it's not only going to er encourage us, it's not only going to give us assurance, it's not only going to give us confidence, but do you know what else the Word of God does? It helps us in our evangelism. So when we are evangelizing, the more scriptural truths we know, the Holy Spirit can bring back to memory the truths of scripture. So as we are in a conversation with someone, we can quote scripture to that individual and the Word of God will never return void. That's what the Bible says, that the Word of God will never return void. His Word that He has spoken will never be empty words. They'll always be powerful words. God's Word is, is like that, it, it's like a hammer that breaks the rock. God's Word is like that plow that breaks up the fallow ground. God's Word is powerful. It's packed with power to come into the person that's walking in depression and walking in defeat and walking in death and looking for life and hope and joy and peace and confidence. When God's Word comes into the soul, it replaces the depression with joy. It replaces the peace with confidence. God's Word is powerful. Let me encourage you, friends, today to memorize the Word of God. You can buy these index cards at a store near you and it's so cheap and then just get yourself a good quality pen and as you're going through the Bible write the verses that really stick out to you. One of the ways that you can really pinpoint what scriptures we need to be memorizing is by asking yourself what scripture is more re most relevant to your testimony or most relevant to your life. Maybe you're like me and you, you struggle with fear and panic attacks and, and things like that. One of the ways to overcome fear and panic attacks is by memorizing scripture that are to do with fear. Like 2 Timothy 1.7, it says this, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Friends, when we quote scriptures like that, and we realize and we declare over ourselves the truth that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind, what that word of God does inside of our soul is it quickens the spirit of God in us to make that word not just information, but revelation. The Word of God becomes revelation to us as we start going through life and the experiences of life that get difficult and hard, we're able to now acknowledge God in all of our ways. We're now able to bring God in on the pain and the anguish that we're going through and say, God, make this scripture real to me. Just like we quoted earlier in 2 Corinthians that the scripture without the Spirit of God breathed upon it or bringing life to it, it's just information, it's just words. But when the Holy Spirit touches the Word of God, what does it do? It becomes real and it gives life. God's Word gives life. Jesus said this, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But then he also said this in John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. You see, my friends, what we see here in the words of Jesus is that truth is more than just written words in a book. But Jesus himself as the person is truth. As we walk in relationship with Jesus, the Bible will become alive. It won't just be like another study book. It won't just be another theological book. It will become alive. Jesus will start speaking to us from the Word of God, giving us direction for our lives, anchoring our souls to doctrinal truth, which we find in Scripture, and we become fed by the Word of God. That's why Jesus said, man won't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. You see, Jesus' words build faith. Jesus' words make us strong in faith. Jesus' words make us unshakable as we go through the trials and difficulties of this life. I believe if there was ever a generation that needs to be memorizing the Word of God, it is the generation that we are living in today. You know, our generation are open prey to deception because we read so many books, so many novels, so many bi biographies, so many doctrinal books that we're neglecting the Word of God, the Bible. Barna just released some 